Because I don't know what I'm going to get off my chest. <laughs> I'll do it yourself. <laughs> Welcome to episode 13 of the V8 Stealth Beetle project. Today we'll be discussing some of the technical aspects. Sorry, John. Sorry. 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 Uh, just before we get going, I've just got to get this off my chest. Um, we're here busting our gut, trying to get as much information out, as many episodes as possible about this build. And undoubtedly, it's getting more and more beautiful each episode. People have got to see it. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's very easy. Share on Facebook, tell your grand, whatever you need to do, but people need to see what's going on here. So what are we going to look at today? Major rude interruption. But anyway, <laughs> we are going to discuss the technical bits and pieces. So we're going to talk about the suspension, some of the engine and gearbox drive shaft scenario. We're going to talk about the turbochargers, um, the electrics, all the technical bits of what's under the body and bolted to the chassis. Good. Let's do it. Absolutely. So before we get into the more technical stuff, we just want to show you the finished body. So after the powder blue and the orange stripe, came the black coach lines. Then everything was flatted one more time and polished. And it looks stunning. The attention to detail and craftsmanship of Kubus and his team at KE Panel Beaters sums up everything that's important to us at V8 Stealth Beetle. Do it right, or simply don't do it. Awesome work, Kubus. To get from this to this took 150 hours and used the same old school techniques and passionate craftsmanship as the legendary British Mark Bentley uses on their exclusive vehicles. Bentley, interestingly enough, is also owned by the Volkswagen Audi Group. As many of you know, this powder blue and orange stripe is the distinctive Golf livery, made famous in the late 1960s as the Golf Oil Racing Team's colours. The V8 Style Beetle project is about designing and hand manufacturing our own sports car with a Beetle body fitting on top. In episode one, we explained quite carefully that this is not about taking a Beetle, pulling out the little engine and sticking a big V8 in the back. That's, it's not at all what we, we're trying to achieve. We are designing a whole new platform. We are mid-mounting a V8 engine, absolutely. Um, but it's got its, all its own complications, its, its own challenges in designing something that's gonna go really quick, very well. But from the outside, people looking at it will just see a little Beetle running around. In the V8 style Beetle, we're using a six-speed manual gearbox, which is being driven by an Audi 4.2 liter V8. Um, this engine will be getting two turbochargers as well. Between the engine and gearbox, we have a clutch and pressure plate and flywheel, which was designed and manufactured in the UK by TTV Racing. Once we've got the engine and gearbox working together, this power needs to be driven to the wheels and it's been driven via drive shafts. The drive shafts have been designed and fitted with a special high performance CV joints, which are also in place. In the episode 12, I discussed the engine cross member, which is this part here. You may recall that it was then still made out of wood. Now we've got it in place. This has been manufactured out of Domex. It's obviously been laser cut 
And this is the mounting point for the shock absorber. So the shock absorber mounts at the top of the cross member and sits down onto the upright. When the wheel moves up and down, it pushes against the shock absorber coil and it's being dampened by the shock absorber, which is sitting inside. The gear shift on the six-speed box is controlled by two push-pull cables. So the movement here is a fore and aft movement and a left and right movement, which is obviously controlled by the gear shift lever. The reason we've designed this now already is because we need to work out the space in this area for the two turbochargers. The exhaust gases leave the engine via the exhaust manifold. So we will be doing probably some kind of routing like that, getting the exhaust gases away from the engine towards the turbochargers. These would be held in place with a clamp like this. The two turbochargers are probably gonna be positioned somewhere over here. But the complication is that this exhaust gas needs to come all the way to the turbocharger. This one needs to come to the turbocharger. Once that exhaust gas gets to the turbochargers and once the two turbochargers spool up, the, the clean, fresh air needs to come back towards the intake manifold, which is sitting over here. The turbochargers need to get rid of the warm air and they will come down, come back up through two silences return and go back out the back of the car. So if, as you can imagine, this is gonna be very, very full at the back here. And in the next episode, you guys will see the design that we've, we've actually finalized. At the front of the V8 Stealth Beetle, we have quite a few challenges as well. The same as what we've had at the back. We're trying to fit a lot of engineering into a very small space without changing the shape of the Beetle. So one of the dead giveaways that this is not a standard beetle of course is the radiator but apart from the radiator we now have a completely new front suspension we have steering we have a, a strong brake system and then we have a lot of systems that need to be supplied to the engine so we have two water hoses running to the back we have brake lines running to the back we have a clutch line we have a vacuum line we have two aircon lines an accelerator cable running to the back of the car as well as electrics. On top of that, we have two fuel lines which need to supply the engine and there's a return line on the fuel as well. The Beetle would need fuel just like any other car. Um, so we've designed a fuel tank using wood. It's just quicker, easier, cheaper. Um, the fuel tank will be made out of aluminium, obviously. And we're trying to incorporate the evaporator as well, which is needed for the AC and for the heater. All this will fit nicely into the front of the Beetle. The fuel filler will probably sit somewhere over here so that it's easy to fill. And all this will be covered with the front lid. Today we will be discussing the electrics of the V8 Stealth Beetle. And as with everything else on this vehicle, everything has to be handmade and purposely built for the application. John has designed the center tunnel in such a way that it splits into two compartments. The one compartment houses all the liquids that run to and fro from the engine, and the other compartment houses the electrics. The center console over here is in close access to the driver where the driver can get to all the switches, likewise the aircon and the heating system. The cables exit the center console through the top, then spread to the front of the vehicle, the electrical system in all vehicles have many different circuits. You have to be able to switch your indicators on, switch your lights on, use your hooter, use your wipers, use your windscreen washer bottle. You need to be able to switch your fog lights on and off. You need to be sure that when you press your brake pedal, the brake lights come on at the back. You also need to be sure that there is a way of starting your car. And all of these things form part of the electrical system on a car. The rest of the circuits that run through the center console then go to the back of the car. At the back of the car, you need to monitor various things, oil pressure, oil temperature, water temperature. You also need to know that there is fuel. There is a low level pump that physically picks up the fuel and then there is a high pressure fuel pump that pressurizes the injection system. Throttle management systems that are incorporated in the engine that when you accelerate that everything works correctly and these are all controlled by the engine computer unit. 
the engine computer unit will be placed in the back of the vehicle in close proximity to the engine and it will control the various items of the engine electrically. Similar to the centre tunnel, the rear firewall also has a recess specifically designed for the cables. Just to emphasise, the wiring that we have here is not a completed wire harness. This is the development wire harness. In the production model, the wiring harness will be a complete integral ergonomic loom that you probably would not even know exists in the vehicle. And that wraps up the electrics for this episode. So that's a wrap on episode 13 of V8 Stealth Beetle. Just a quick reminder, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the little bell icon and you can get our videos sooner than anyone else. And we look forward to seeing you pretty soon in episode 14.